One of the great blessings of moving out here to the West three years, more than three years ago, that I wasn't expecting whatsoever, that I didn't know about at all, is how amazing the light is out here. I'll have the opportunity sometimes to be leaving the church after a service in the evening. And I'll pull out onto 12th Street just here and I'll turn north. And we have from 12th Street, right in front of the church, the most incredible view of the book cliffs. And at just the right time in the evening, as the sun is setting, the sun will be hitting those book cliffs just right. And the colors come out with such amazing vibrancy that the whole cliff looks as if it's on fire. And it fills me every time I see that with incredible joy to see that beauty, to see that warmth reflected on those cliffs. The sun out here is so effective that sometimes in the right time of year you can be standing in the shadows and be freezing cold and then step into the sun and be sweating. That's how powerful our sun is out here. You know, it was just a few weeks ago down in the San Juans for a few days. I was camping just south of Silverton a little bit. And it was the evening we were starting our campfire. And I remember I happened to look back behind us. And there's a mountain there, Snowden Peak. And it, too, was just brilliantly illumined. The whole thing, even though there was snow still on it, was orange and red with the colors of the setting sun. Our sunsets out here amaze me. And something I've noticed is on the occasions when our sky has been filled with smoke from the forest fires, from the wildfires, both the ones that we've had here and the smoke that's blown in from elsewhere in the country, it seems to just make those sunsets even more spectacular, doesn't it? So even in the middle of that terrible destruction, even in the middle of that suffering, the light fills the world with beauty. The light fills the world with warmth. The light fills the world with joy. Our Lord, in today's Gospel reading, tells the disciples, you are the light of the world. You, he says, are the light of the world. This saying of our Lord was not spoken simply to the apostles in the past, but it's spoken to each and every one of us. We, today, are the light of the world. And the truth is that right now, today, the sun is setting. In fact, for the past 2,000 years, we've been living in a world in which the sun is setting. And so if we are the light of the world, as Christ tells us, in this world that's full of pain, in this world that's full of suffering, we are the light of the world in that world in which the sun is setting. And so we have the task, we have the opportunity, we have the mandate to fill the world with light, to fill the world with beauty, to fill the world with warmth to fill the world with joy. How can we do that? We're limited people. We're sinful human beings. How can we possibly live out this great task of being the light of the world? 
We find the answer to that question today in the teaching of the Fourth Ecumenical Council. We're celebrating today the Holy Fathers who gathered together in the city of Chalcedon in the Fourth Ecumenical Council. They were responding to a man named Evtikis. Long before the Fourth Ecumenical Council, the church had figured out, the church, along with the grace of the Holy Spirit, had taught through the Nicene Creed that Jesus Christ is of one essence, is consubstantial, homoousios, with the Father. We know through the teaching of the First Ecumenical Council in Nicaea that Jesus Christ, who walked here on earth, who healed the sick, who raised the dead, who cast out demons, who was himself raised from the dead and ascended into heaven, is nothing other than the presence of God within creation. We learn from the fathers of the First Ecumenical Council that Jesus Christ is God. Nothing less. And so, this person, Evtikis, was saying, well, what do we do with that teaching? Jesus Christ is God, but what about his humanity? Evtikis taught that when the Son of God became incarnate in the person of Jesus Christ, that the divine nature swallowed up the human nature. The divine nature is so much greater than the human nature. That if Tiki said, well, there's no way they could coexist, surely the divine completely overshadowed the human in Jesus Christ so that there was no human left, he said. But instead, the human nature in Jesus Christ was, was eradicated, was eliminated, was abolished by the divine nature, which is so much greater in Jesus Christ. Well, the Holy Fathers met together in Chalcedon because hearing this teaching from Eutychus, they thought to themselves, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound like what the gospel says. That doesn't sound like what the church has taught from the beginning. And so they gathered together in council, as they always have, to discuss these things, to work out through the grace of the Holy Spirit, what is the truth? Who is Jesus Christ after all? And the teaching that the Holy Fathers of the Fourth Ecumenical Council brought to us is that Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man, that he possesses completely, 100%, the divine nature and the human nature, and that these two natures are united in him without being confused, without being mixed up, without one of them eradicating the other, but both of them exist within him. Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man. In fact, the Holy Father said, just as Jesus Christ is homoousios, of one substance with the Father in his divinity, Jesus Christ is also homoousios, of one substance with us in his humanity. He shares with us everything that we are. And he shares with God the Father everything that he is. Fully God and fully man. Now how does this teaching give us the answer to this problem, this question, of how we as limited, fallen human beings are supposed to live out this great calling of filling the world with light, filling the world with joy, being the light of the world. And the answer is that we see in this teaching that our limited humanity is not limited anymore. Because through the incarnation, the divine and the human are united with one another. And everything that we think of as being mundane, limited, merely human in our lives, everything that we think of as being historical, 
matters of fact here in this earth. All of those things that we see as being small, that we see as being imperfect, everything that we are as human beings is united in Jesus Christ with the divine, is raised up to God the Father, is imbued with the grace of the Holy Spirit, so that as we are going through our day, as we are conducting our work, whatever that might be, that business that we're going through, that work that we're doing, is holy work. It's easy to say that as a, as a priest, but it's just as true, certainly, for a teacher. It's just as true, certainly, for a doctor, a librarian, a fast food worker, whatever it is that you do. Everything that is human has been imbued with the grace of the Holy Spirit. Everything that is human has been lifted up to God the Father through the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the God-man, o Theanthropos Christos, the God-man, Jesus Christ. And so we can fill the world with light. We can fill the world with joy, with hope, with warmth. How? By shining brightly in our faith. By shining brightly in our love for one another. By shining brightly in the hope that God has given us. A hope that says, yes, the sun is setting. But still, the world is filled with joy. Still, the world is filled with the grace of the Holy Spirit. Still, the world is full of warmth. And we are called not as limited human beings, but as Christians who have been united with Christ through holy baptism. To be Christ's presence in the world, Christ who is the light. To bring the light of Christ to our neighbor. To bring the light of Christ to our workplace. To bring the light of Christ to our city. To bring the light of Christ to our communities. So that as the sun is setting, the people around us would see through our lives the joy, the hope, the love, the warmth, and the light that comes from Christ. Let us take the opportunity today to live out Christ's commandment Christ's commission here to the Holy Apostles to become the light of the world so that joy and hope and love could reign in Christ's creation. Amen.